move to the art of knife making. We're going to use this piece of 440C stainless steel. We're going to use a canvas markita handle. The blade is 10 inches overall, full tang. Uh, we're going to do a flat grind. I'm hoping to make this my own personal tack knife. But every time I say that, somebody ends up wanting to buy it. So uh, anyways, let's get out here in the shop and get started. Alright, so let's remove the bigger pieces of steel first. I want to do as much of the stock removal with the cutting wheel as we can. Now we'll make relief cuts in the tight areas. Makes it a whole lot easier to get in there and remove the stock without accidentally cutting in where you don't want to cut. Hmm. I want that hot metal up against the uh, electrical cords. Make things a little too exciting. Okay, so I just took this out of the water so cool down. You know, people say you can't throw throw this in water when it's hot. If it's glowing red hot, no. Don't throw it in water. You will uh, destroy it. You'll crack it. But when you're cutting it and grinding it, uh, you know, you're going to have to get it out of your hands at some point because it's going to get hot and put it in the water. It ain't going to hurt it. After we temper this edge, and we're in here laying in the, a nice sharp edge, every couple passes I'm going to be dumping this in water to keep it from getting too hot because if we get it very hot, just color this metal at all and the temper is done and we go back to the heat treating and that's where you end up with cracks that's where you end up with flaws so we uh we don't like doing the flaws all right let's keep going all right i'm using a 36 grit one by 30 belt it takes off quite a bit in a hurry you want to make sure you keep your knife down flat when you're working with it, or you can take a chunk out in a place where you don't want to chunk take it out. I'll also take off skin in a hurry, so be extra careful. Okay, so I got my jig set up. Just gonna make some passes here. Yes, I'm using a jig now. I know I used to free hand. I'm getting older.
I will dip it every half. Alright, so I got my uh, knife in my vise. I don't have a drill press. I uh, just do it the old fashioned way. I can do it, I do it all the time. And uh, just gotta keep it straight, take my time. I'm not leaning down hard on the drill, I'm steadying the drill. Change drill bits. The tube that goes through the back is not 3 sixteenths, but quarter. I also change the location so it's a little better. So it's a little bit bigger. That's okay. Okay, I'm on it. I'm going to make sure it's a good enough tube that you can actually put a decent paracord to it. I know on fast forward it sounds like this drill's turning really fast, but it's actually turning very slow so I don't burn up my drill bit. Thank you for watching part one. In part two, we're going to go over uh, differential heat treatment. And what that'll do is about three quarters of the knife edge, the, the sharp edge, will be heat treated only. That'll keep the spine and the handle area flexible. That way, in a tactical use, you have a lot less chances of actually breaking the knife.